Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. One of my friends just texted me a Star Wars quote. Now that I'm 40, 40 in one day, your power is a weak old man. Let's go right back to your calls. You've been holding long enough. And Paul Craig Roberts is coming up on geopolitics. Huge breaking news on finances. It's all coming up. But right now, let's go to Kim in Washington. Thank you for holding. As another first-time caller, welcome. Hi, Alex. Um, I'm calling today because I wanted to talk about my daughter. Um, she was damaged by the MMR vaccine when she got her booster. Oh, yeah. Um, That's one of the really bad ones, yeah. It is. And, you know, the doctors have been denying that this has happened. Well, of course, um, they're accomplices. Sure. Well, so it started, you know, she got her shot and within a couple hours, she started walking like she was drunk. Um, this continued. Oh, continued that's standard. That's a, a neurological autoimmune response in the brain, like similar to Guillain-Barre. Right. Is, is that what they well, told you or they deny that? No, well, they've said that this is a mysterious illness. Oh. And so it went from um, her walking like she was drunk to having double vision to being unresponsive, small seizures. And she ended up in the hospital with massive brain swelling. Um, yeah, see, there there you go. I mean, I've, I've interviewed so many medical doctors. That's why I know that. Look, the, the vaccine inserts say it can do that to you. But right. but well, listen, and, you're, and, listen. Here's the problem. You're lucky they didn't say you beat her up with the blame braiding, because that when it's when it, it's much worse for boys, because they're not as strong blood brain barrier as women. Women are much tougher than men when it comes to trauma. You name it, because they have to go through childbirth. That's just a genetic fact in all mammals. It's on record. Right. From whales to Homo well. sapiens sapien, and and I'm just so sad to hear this. But yeah, no, but imagine the little boys. It's many times worse. And then they give the the 18 month all the third round. You're blessed if they have the convulsion and then become autistic from brain damage right there in the hospital because then they, they look at the surveillance camera and can't say you beat them up because they like the double right. juicy bonus of putting you in prison and institutionalizing the child they've just brain damaged. But I'm sorry, go back to what happened to your daughter. So, um, you know, so now she is, um, she is legally mentally disabled. Ah. She is in the, she's in the sixth grade and she does second grade level work. Um, How old was she when they hit her with the uh, Kim Web? This actually happened. I I got them done late, so this actually happened between the first and the second grade. Yeah, um, and so she was doing great up the first and second grade, and then and, and then they lied to you and said it was the law. You got to have the shots for school, which is not true. Yeah. It's part of a criminal conspiracy, yeah. a eugenics yeah. operation, and uh, and and then and then you gave her the shot, and this happened. Yes, and you know the reason I'm calling is because. Do me a favor, talk right into your telephone. I think somebody else oh. is on your phone line listening. Oh, somebody I'm else at your house, Leah, go ahead. So the, the, there's two reasons why I'm calling to tell this story. The first is that this could not have happened to my daughter if I was a so-called anti-vaccination conspiracy nut. The second reason I am calling is because I made a huge mistake by never questioning the doctors in the system um, this is my only way to honor her now is by telling people what has happened to her. And well, ma'am, I'm obnoxious. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to come back, and give you the floor for four minutes to start the whole story over and tell it as a testament. Because I get so upset when you start talking because I know what you're going to say. And I, I've seen it thousands of times. I'll see an autistic kid and I'll say, let me guess, 18 months, third round MMR. I mean, it's like clockwork. It's all on purpose. There's all these government documents. They admit it. And they're just literally trying to kill our children's brains. And I just love my daughter so much and my son. And I, and I have empathy. I, I feel your daughter as if it was my daughter. And it makes me very violent feeling. I'm going to be quite uh, honest with you. And um, I just hope the doctors are all real proud of themselves. And the cancer, the brain damage, the autism up 30,000% now. Uh, stay there, ma'am. I'm going to come back to you, start the whole story over, give a testament from Kim, and then we'll talk to Jonathan, and uh, we'll talk to Reese, Joseph, Duluth, and others. And the enemy's operations are so over the top, the eugenicist by the 40s said, we're having trouble forcibly sterilizing people worldwide and dumbing them down, and the answer was from the Soviet gulags.
This is a Pulitzer Prize winning, two Pulitzer Prize winning books on the Nuremberg trials because the Nazis had adopted hydrofluorosilicic acid at about three parts per million. They do 1.6 part per million here uh, to massively reduce IQ points at least 20%. Uh, 1.6 does it between 7 IQ and 14 IQ, depending on the study you look at. I'm giving you Harvard studies. I'm giving you Chinese government studies, Japanese government studies, uh, Canadian studies, University of Texas studies. You don't believe me? Just type in University of Texas study on fluoride IQ. I mean, just, just you know, take the challenge. Find out why I'm so freaked out. And, and I've always been a sane person, but it is insane what the globalists are doing. And to sit there and watch them carry it out. And to know <coughs> that you keep hearing about secret sterilizations in Texas and California that are totally illegal, where they grab foster kids, you name it, and sterilize them, prisoners and sterilize them. And they'll even do surgery tests on them and test docs and on them. You know, it comes in, it's like, well, nobody's going to get in trouble and it's all been sealed. And oh, we did take your blood from birth since 1972 and put it in a global database and companies say they own your blood now blah 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 your dna and then a lady called in, in the last segment who just joined us kim in washington and was and i and, and i was illustrating let me guess she took the shot and then had blood on the brain and convulsions and then lost a bunch of her iq to see it's designed to only skim off 10 20 points but sometimes you have a catastrophic catastrophic event especially in males, because of the blood-brain barrier and other uh, issues, according to medical doctors. And I'm here talking about, it's not like Joe Stalin lining folks up and shooting them or Hitler. They just have doctors who believe in what they're doing. The nurses, they're brain-damaging people. They pretty much know what's going on now, but they can't admit the whole thing was wrong. Going back uh, eight years ago now, the American Dental Association, via lawsuits and their own toxicologist uh, going public, the head toxicologist in Canada, who's also a dentist, has gone public, who promoted fluoridation, and, and, and uh, he's now apologized. Uh, that was two years ago. That was all over the Canadian papers about how deadly it is and, and how he believed the lies. Uh, the point is, is that for seven, eight years, about eight years ago now, you can look this up. They, they said, stop giving children under six fluoride toothpaste or fluoride water. But then you notice they rolled out fluoride for kids in all the major bottled water. Started fortifying juice drinks with it and stuff, calling it minerals added for flavor. And they put the most deadly type. You need calcium fluoride or you will die. Very small amounts of it. You need arsenic, very low amounts or you, you, know, you will die. You need lead, very low amounts or you will die. It's all part of the chain reaction, ring structure, uh, cell transfers, according to the scientists we've interviewed. It's well-known science, but they're giving it to you at hundreds of thousands of times what you need. And they're giving you the electra, electrified hydrofluorosilicic acid. So they're taking it and turbocharging it so that it then acts as an adjuvant to the other drugs added to the food and water to then elevate the level of the drugging. And that's why people look so unhealthy and society screwed up. I mean, you're in the matrix, folks. You're being hit with chemical biological attack. That's why when some arrogant cop or somebody yells at me filming in public, I start laughing. I go, man, you're a slave. They're going to take your pension fund. You know this isn't freedom. Why are you following these orders? How much of your family's dying of cancer right now? I did this in England and the U.S. repeatedly on tape. And they just go, oh, what do you know about that? And I'm like, well, I saw in the local British paper that half the Brits by 2010 are going to have cancer. He goes, I, I know. What's, why is it going up? Why has everybody got it? And I'm like, it's a chemical biological warfare program. Here are some books you can read written by the enemy. You understand you're not part of the winning team. And they go, I already know that. Uh, I'm just following my orders. Well, I'm like, okay, just whatever, man. I told you what's going on. And I'm not a hero. I'm nothing special. They're killing us. Of course I'm warning you. It's not special that I'm telling you this. It's crazy. They put plastic in most of the fast food bread that gives you kidney failure and liver failure on record. And I think about this woman who called in and her little sweet first grade daughter who they lied to and said, take the MMR shot. She just joined us. She was telling the story. I wanted to recap the whole thing without me interrupting. And they gave her the MMR shot and then she couldn't walk. First she was stumbling. They couldn't walk. Then had seizures, blood on the brain. They admitted it all. Said, we don't know what the mystery illness is. Folks, 
They designed Gardasil to eat your ovaries. We told you that eight years ago with scientists and doctors. And they had Rick Perry lie and say it's the law to take it. And a majority of Texas girls lined up and took it. And folks, they are wrecks now. And they got away with it. They got away with it. And I've had Rick Perry's staff not once but twice now. People I see on TV, but off record. You know, people that are really come to me and apologize. And go, what do we do? One of them was in the military at Fort Sam Houston. And saw special forces brought in. It was six years before Endgame. He came to the Endgame premiere, so that was 14 years ago. Right when Perry was already governor, or about to be governor. And he came in, this is before he worked for Perry. And they all gave him inoculations. I think he said it was eight of them. And they all died two days later. And they strapped them all down. And they said, we're giving them inoculations. And went, oh, they don't give you all the info. They go, oh, they're sick. They're convulsing. Probably some of a rabies or something. Weaponized rabies. They strapped them all down as these special forces guys were murdered. Then they sent guys in in hazmat suits to spray bleach all over the walls and take them out. And before they did that, they sucked all the blood out of the troops. And you know what they were going to do. They're using their blood as growth medium. They literally took the troops and sucked their blood out for growth medium. <laughs> you want to compromise with these people? You think they just use fetal cells to grow vaccines? They use the troops' blood and organs. You're nothing to them. And the sooner you figure that out, the sooner we're going to turn this around. And I, he goes, what do I do? He goes, Rick Perry's really good. You know, he believed in all that. He didn't. He goes, but I know a lot of this is true because I saw it. You saw it, didn't you? But what? You know, give him shots, watch him die. It's loving. It's loving. So take all the shots, okay? The government wants to help you. Let's talk to Kim. Kim, you've got four minutes. Tell your story of what happened to your daughter, where you're at, and how it all unfolded. Go ahead. Okay. Um, starting from starting from the beginning or where we're at now? No, no, because some stations just joined us. Start over with oh. what your daughter, what happened. Okay. Um, my daughter was um, vaccinated by the MMR vaccine, um, the booster. Um, within a couple hours, she started walking like she was drunk. She could not walk a straight line. Um, and it, this continued for a few weeks and, you know, honestly, I was so young, I, I didn't really connect it to the shot, unfortunately. Um, it was, it was looking back now that I've seen, you know, it, it started within a couple hours. Um, <clears throat> she, this, it continued on for weeks. Um, she'd be walking and then just fall over on the ground. Um, and let me guess, the hospital didn't even tell you to give her Benadryl or anything to reduce swelling or anything. They just said, we don't know oh, what's no. happening. Yeah. No. And and like, I we're giving your daughter a gift. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sure. And I took her back to the doctor and told him what was happening. And, you know, they had no explanation. They didn't, they didn't even, it was almost like they were just ignoring what I was saying. And so um, she started complaining of double vision. Um, you know, I'd be talking to her and she'd be like, mommy, I see a whole bunch of you. And, you know, I, I took her back to the doctor for that. And no putting her on ice, no giving her nothing. Benadryl, no nothing, oh, when nothing. they knew full well what they'd just done, but they couldn't right. diagnose it right. or they would admit they did it. So they sat there and watched her lose her IQ. But tell us what happened oh, next. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, I started, she'd go into these spells where she'd just, there. And I try and talk to her and she, oh wouldn't, she wouldn't even talk back to me. Um, this continued for months, about two months. Um, I, I took her to the doctor. I took her into the ER for the, for the, um, double vision. They all ignored me. Honestly, they ignored me after two months. Um, I, I, I looked in at her and she was um, completely slumped over. She couldn't move. She couldn't even pick up her own head. Um, and But she was complaining of headaches. And so I took her into the hospital, and they were trying to say she had meningitis and all of these crazy things that she did not have. 
the test came back negative. Of course. Um, and she had massive brain swelling. They had to put her on steroids to get the brain swelling to stop. We were in there for weeks. and But it, it, know, it slowed it down, didn't it? Yeah. It, but see, they could have given you that minutes after, but they can't admit they just did it. So they send you exactly. off. And yeah. for liability, I mean, these people, these doctors and nurses are murdering people's brains. You know, a lot of people oh, die. I mean, just search woman dies after flu shot, boy dies after flu shot, boy dies after uh, MMR shot. It's happening all the time. Mm -hmm. It is happening all the time. And, you know, my, my daughter was one of those people. And her life has been changed forever. Um, this is too powerful. We're skipping the break. The money doesn't matter. Can just skip the break. Continue, ma'am. Go ahead. You. Thank you. Um, before this happened, she was a happy, um, thriving little girl. She had friends. She had fun. Um, she she did excellent in school. Granted, she didn't have a lot of schooling under her belt um, because she was young, but she was doing wonderful. She was such a sweet, happy girl, and it when this happened. It felt like when I left that hospital, my daughter died, and I have someone else now. No, that's now what they did. They, they, they gave your daughter a partial lobotomy, and uh -huh. uh, they do that to little babies every day. They do it to little girls, yeah. little boys. They sterilize them with the Gardasil, and it's all on record. But it's so mm -hmm. horrible, the public can't admit it. And even when doctors get brain-damaged children themselves... They won't admit it, right. most of them. But let me tell you, most doctors I know and nurses, they pressured me three times to give shots, even though the doctor we have was a listener and a good lady. And But it's such a cult from the hospital management, and the nurses would always go, we don't give our kids it either. We we know right. it causes autoimmune stuff, but we get fired if we don't push it. And we need, this is, but because all we're talking about is gay, lesbian, black, white, you know, uh, blah, 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 Michelle Obama's arms. While meanwhile, they're doing this to everybody. And it tears my guts out, and, and, and but also sends me into a rage, because here's the deal. They're now beginning, for the first time ever in California and New York, actual forced inoculations, where they're not just lying and saying it's the law to show their criminality. It's the law this August to get vaccinated. There's 50 vaccines by law you've got to get. Show up at Zilker Park in Austin to get your free shots, parents. Prevent disease. And, and people will even collapse there, or they'll go, oh, they just got scared by the shot. My daughter's having a convulsion 10 minutes after. Well, that did, we don't know what that is. Blood's coming out their nose, out their ears, you know. That's a gift. That's the gift of the New World Order. It's the yeah. sacrament. And, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic with you. Your pain really gets to me, but, but I, I'm being cynical with dark satire back at the people that, that go along with this. Uh, and I mean, I know medical doctors who literally I've run into, and then I knew years ago, let's just say connected to family, who who literally hate my guts because I talk about this and they go, well, there are some problems, but 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 problem, you know, problems uh, are, are outpaced by benefits, cost benefit analysis. But that's not even true. And they go, well, don't you believe in the science of inoculation and acquired immunity? And I go, yes, I know it's 500 years old. I know it started with pox. I know how it was. How they took the pustules with a toothpick and shove it under the skin. <clears throat> I get all that. Give someone a lesser exposure so they don't get the full exposure. Give it to them when their immune system's up, not down. You'd usually get it when you had a bad immune system, and it would kill you. So give it to someone when they're doing well. Still, though, the pox treatment could kill people sometimes. It was a cost-benefit analysis. But pox out of somebody's pussy arm put into your son or daughter so that they don't get it when they're sick and then die, is not genetically engineered super weapons by a global government known for doing 100 years of secret testing and literally creating Nazi Germany as a testing ground and then destroying it, who are involved in depopulation and openly saying babies are like mackerel. I have articles here today where they're now coming out saying it's end-of-life planning to kill your, your, your unborn child or your baby. I, I mean, that's how... There it is right there on screen. This, this is the type of stuff that we're talking about. And when you're faced with something this evil, this over the top, by the authorities, it's hard for the average person to come to grips with it. I believe in the science of inoculation. 
the elites get very special, proprietary, multi-thousand dose, made in incredibly clean laboratories. They get real vaccines. And that's come out in the news. The British elite, the German elite, the German government, and the German military heard about it and said, we're not taking it unless you give us that. Uh, this is the issue. Then they lie to you and say, oh, we've cleaned up the vaccines. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. It's not cleaning them up. It's done on purpose. Bayer put HIV and hepatitis in the factor eight and knew it and shipped it out to hundreds of thousands and killed them. Okay, and, and that all came out in court, folks. That's on the news. They wanted to kill people. They knew and did it. They want to kill you. They will kill you if they can. But they don't want you to know how you got killed. They want to hit you in 20 years you, down the road you drop with debilitating diseases. They know what you're going to get from what they've done to you. They develop the treatments, not the cures. And then while testing all this stuff on you, they're developing life extension technologies for themselves. And I've given you the entire paradigm of the enemy. Your daughter is not dead. Her soul is there. She can be uh, taught to grow again. I would limit the television screen time. I would play her classical music. Uh, I would uh, pray for her. I would take her to the top of clear, clean mountains, and she will. She she can come back uh, from it. Your daughter is not dead. They wish she was, uh, but uh, God bless you, and I really appreciate your call. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And sometimes I go off when I get a caller like that for 20, 30 minutes because, ladies and gentlemen, this is so serious. Talk about dehumanization. Police shoot helper dog instead of, uh, they shoot labs, you name it all the time. They'll come out with their tail wagging, they'll shoot them. In some cases, the dogs are growling, and I get why somebody shoots a big, scary dog, but it's not a bull mastiff. Uh, it's not a, um, you know, it's a pit bull or something. It, 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 they shoot chihuahuas and stuff as a default. You should be a little bit more manly uh, if you want to be a cop or womanly, Valkyrie-like. Uh, but here's Jakari Jackson's report on this event that happened a few days ago from InfoWars Nightly News. Police shoot um, a service dog. Uh, here's the report. It's a fat lab barking. Obviously tell that dog's not a threat. I mean, the cop should just yell and say, get out of here. To kick it in the head, At some whatever. point, we've all been annoyed by a barking dog or a dog on the loose, and sometimes police are called in to handle these situations. But is this the type of police response that you would want to happen in your own front yard? And yes, once again, those dogs should have been under the direct supervision and control of their owner. But with a modern officer carrying things such as pepper spray, was lethal force really necessary? And let's stay on this topic of lethal force. What if the gun was turned the other way and the officer was in the crosshairs? That's exactly what happened right here in the state of Texas. Sheriffs looking for marijuana burst into a man's home and ran straight into gunfire by a startled resident killing an officer. The resident was able to avoid a murder charge, but it goes to show that over-aggressive police tactics can backfire on officers. Over-aggressive tactics such as kicking a woman out of her own home. A woman was displaced from her home so a SWAT team could perform reconnaissance, much like we saw during the Boston bombing. But to give credit where it's due, not all officers are out in the streets behaving badly, such as in New York where they just busted up a New York crime syndicate with joint agency cooperation. So if we have more stories like this, police going after real crimes and going after the real perpetrators and not harassing the general populace, we can break free of this current police state. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. All right, that's Jakari Jackson. That's just a minute and a half of the 30-minute news transmission every night, 7 o'clock central, prisonplanet.tv. I've got a Leanne McIntyre report I've got to get to, but I don't think we have time to air it right now. I'm going to air it later in the broadcast because it's so important. Uh, it deals with uh, a dumpster diving professor who's trying to teach us that we should live with nothing so that the globalists can have bigger red carpets, bigger palaces, and live like kings while telling us we can't have air conditioning or over a 250-square-foot home so that more of what we make can be paid in taxes. That's what the austerity uh, is all about. That's going to be coming up uh, after Dr. Paul Craig Roberts leaves us. We're going to play that with Gerald Salente uh, and talk about this artificial scarcity economy that is Agenda 21 worldwide um, grid. Briefly... Super male vitality, folks, is the number one item that people reorder. The highest level of reorder for super male vitality. That's a fusion of, what is it, eight 
top herbs from organic, concentrated form. And you've heard the rave reviews. We got 15% off going on Supermel Vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. We brought you the best available, period. I said, no expense shall be spared. I want the best, Dr. Group. And it's blowing people away. The problem is we're going to sell out at the rate we're selling it in about four or five days. And then it might be as much as two weeks before we get more because they're, they're waiting for one other herb to come in. Because we don't have the dry herbs. We have the raw herbs to concentrate it. So if you want to get it, order it now. People just love this 15% off. And I'm hurting myself doing it. But I, I just it funds the operation as well. So you win, win, win. There's no way you can lose purchasing products at InfoWarsLife.com. And we have the new Molon Labe shirt that I think is the best looking t-shirt we've ever had. Come and take it with the um, Greek Spartan and the M4s on the front, InfoWars.com on the back. That's InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsStore.com. And your purchase is the vital to our right. resistance. By Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, he's an American economist. And he's, of course, a uh, syndicated columnist as well. He's a former editor of the Wall Street Journal and Business Week, and he is the father of Reaganomics, and he's really uh, needs no introduction to our audience. We have a lot of new stations, a lot of new listeners, so I guess he does, and uh, we'll give you his website address as well uh, on screen coming up here uh, in just a moment. We also carry his work at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, but before I go any further, uh, I just want to cover the waterfront with him to make sense of what's going on in the economic meltdown. Clearly a global depression. Uh, this Market Watch article, scary 1929 market chart, uh, gains traction. Um, government is gearing up for a collapse. I think we're going into a slow collapse, but I want to get an update from him on that. But first, the reason I wanted to get him on last week and now he's here is to talk about Ukraine. And again, I'm not a Putinite, but compared to what we've got, uh, you know, our system's so bad, he, and he's not ag aggressively trying to expand things. He stopped the Syria war, the purge of Christians. Clearly, the Saudi Arabians are bombing them because they didn't go along with the takeover of Syria to destabilize uh, the Olympics. But uh, you, you, uh, you see Ukraine not voting at first to go with uh, the EU. And now um, Russia is not even trying to control Ukraine from what I've seen. I want a free and independent Ukraine. And George Soros' people are all over this, as usual, trying to destabilize Russia because they want a new world order run by the Wall Street kleptocrats. They want a new world order run by anti-free market folks that make the wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belford, look like a saint. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the bottom line. This is not America doing this to Russia. This is criminal elements doing it, in my view. I want Dr. Roberts' take on that. So, so there's the preface of, of, of my questions and how I see it. Uh, this is a big deal, though, to, to be trying to overthrow Ukraine and audio recordings of this, obviously, with ambassadors coming out. And a very serious situation, uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, give us your expert breakdowns. I know you were in big talks with the Russians, to, so they bring down their, their empire at the end of the Reagan administration. I know that you know a lot of these folks. You know the French. Uh, you've gotten their highest award uh, for some of the work you've done on that front as well. What's really happening right now? In the Ukraine, um, there was a, a joint effort initially between the EU and Washington uh, to uh, bring the <clears throat> EU, uh, sorry, to bring the Ukraine into NATO and into EU. Now, the, the EU just wanted uh, an expansion of its uh, domain. Uh, Washington wanted uh, to uh, have uh, the Ukraine incorporated into NATO so they can put more military bases on Russia's frontier. And they also want to uh, have their puppets running the country so that can be opened up for looting by the American banks and the American corporations. You know, like, for example, Latvia was. So what has happened is uh, for uh, many years, uh, Washington and also the EU have been financing uh, what are called NGOs, non-governmental organizations in Ukraine. Last December, this uh, Victoria Newland, the assistant secretary of state who's running the operation, the American operation there, told the national press Club that Washington had invested $5 billion 
in agitation in the Ukraine. And so what we're witnessing now is all of these NGOs, some of them pretend to be human rights organizations, some pretend to be educational, to teach democracy, uh, some are just uh, provocative. Um, and they have uh, used these, uh, that is the State Department, the CIA, have used these uh, institutions, these NGOs, uh, to uh, uh, have this ongoing protest. Now, the EU and Washington have now fallen out over this because the EU has realized that uh, for Washington to take over the Ukraine is a direct threat to Russia. And they realize that Russia can cut uh, Europe off from oil and natural gas, and they realize that if there's a war, uh, Europe will be destroyed. And that's why we don't need Ukraine to fall to the EU that's going to suck it dry. That's like asking to have cancer implanted in you. Clearly yeah. predatory. As you know, their own EU documents have come out that it was a planned program to consolidate and suck countries dry. So the Ukrainians vote to not join it. And so they have hordes of paid operatives take to the streets. It'd be one thing if these were real you know, uh, Ukrainians wanting to get rid of their government. But clearly these are foreign manipulated saboteur operatives by every by every benchmark well um the ngos are financed uh, by the west and they're they have provoked it but i think most of the people out there are just dupes and they're ukrainians oh of course uh, yeah the, the western ukraine is sure, i'm uh, talking about the ngos that are made up of ukrainian operatives sorry i was talking about the ngos themselves doctors yeah yeah, yeah. Go ahead. yeah well uh, I was in Washington when they decided to create the uh, National Endowment for Democracy, which is sort of the parent organization for these NGOs. And the explicit purpose given was that it would be used uh, to destabilize uh, Eastern Europe and, uh, and, uh, and Soviet republics and would be used for the benefit of uh, American hedge enemy. And that's the reason it was created. And so we've seen it operate in many places. Uh, they tried to achieve that uh, revolution, that color revolution in the Ukraine. What they call it? The Orange Revolution, I think. Yes, they've tried over and over again. And they came very close to getting the Ukraine then. And, uh, and they tried to have Georgia start a war with Russia. A very dangerous situation. Um, what do you expect Russia to do? I mean, they're, they're, they're starting to really get in more of a fighting stance. Well, I don't know about what they will do. Um, I, one prospect is the country will split apart because the, the eastern Ukraine is more Russian. It's Russian Orthodox. Uh, the western Ukraine is less Russian. It's Catholic. Um, and I think that it's really two countries, and what you may see is uh, is a split. Um, what I find so distressing is that the uh, Ukrainians in the I think these protests are largely in the West, Western part. No, they are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and and so uh, what I find distressing is that these protesters are such dupes that they're destroying the independence of their own country. They, they don't understand that if you are in the EU, that your national government is subservient to the EU. How government. can they not look at Greece and Spain and Ireland and everywhere? I mean, this is like wanting to get in the car with Jeffrey Dahmer or something. Why would anyone want to join the EU? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that just shows the influence of the NGOs. You know, the NGOs, like Victoria Newland said, uh, Washington has spent $5 billion. That's $5,000 million. You can buy a lot of people for that money. <laughs> you can buy a lot. And, and the years of agitation by these NGOs, uh, and, and also, you know, in the, in the Western Ukraine, there's a huge disaffection from Russia. Uh, they, there's this romantic form of Ukrainian nationalism. And uh, there's a real uh, dislike of, of Russia. So even though Ukraine is independent now, uh, they have this notion that, well, the country will uh, somehow be under Russia's thumb unless we can get under the thumb of the Europeans and the Americans. 
So it's it's kind of a nonsensical thing, but it is very dangerous because uh, I think that the Russians do view uh, a NATO bases in the Ukraine or in Ukraine, as it's called. Now, That's right on their border as as a direct threat. And so they and, and this is why there is now a, a divergence between the EU and uh, the United States and why the Victoria Newland said, you know, screw the EU. Now, for those that don't know, tell them about that. Well, uh, the the. Europeans realized that this was going too far and they wanted to stop encouraging the protests because they understand that it dawned on them that it's a threat to Russia and then therefore it's an indirect threat to Europe. And so they, the Europeans, the EU, said, we've had enough, let's stop these protests. And Washington said, no, we're going to keep them going. We're going to use the protests, turn it into a revolt. Uh, take over the government. See, we've got a list of the candidates we're going to put in charge. And the EU was protesting. And, and by the so way, that's what the Russians used to do was get a quasi puppet government in that would then invite them into these countries. We are doing what the USSR used to do. I mean, this is we're doing the bad guy <laughs> deeds, correct? No, but we always have, especially in, in uh, Central and South America. There's never been any difference, really between the United States and the Soviet Union and how they manipulate other countries. But what we're doing now is we're manipulating the countries in the Russian sphere of influence. <laughs> We've gone beyond our own sphere of influence. The whole world now is our sphere of influence. No, no other country has. And what do you make, what's the strategy, I mean, I want your take on this, to have the athletes dressing like women uh, I mean, you know, everybody loved us because of James Dean and John Wayne. And, and I mean, guys look dressed like women, that's great. But should our national symbol be a man in drag? I mean, should that be our symbol at the, uh, at the Olympics? I, I don't think that propaganda is very well thought out. <laughs> no, it's not. But we don't need to, to get into that right now. We've got the Ukraine and the economy, which are important. No, no, absolutely. I'm just saying, uh, like British uh, you know, Deputy Defense Minister said two weeks ago, the United States doesn't even seem to have a strategy now except chaos, and we're losing all the soft power. What, what do you think of Washington right now? I mean, how would you describe it, its, its, its setup? I mean, do they know what they're doing? Are they out of control? What's going on? Uh, I think overall, uh, it's sort of out of control, but on specific things, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing in the Ukraine. And notice that this week, the House of Representatives uh, overwhelmingly passed a resolution supporting the protest in the Ukraine, as if that's got anything to do with the United States. And they um, issued uh, a threat of imposing sanctions should the Ukrainian police put the protest down. So in other words, uh, if you treat uh, people there the way our police treat protesters in the United States, we're going to put sanctions on you. So it, this type of hypocrisy, it must stun the world. You know, what happens to peaceful protesters in the United States? They get beat up and tasered and, and tear That's dead. right. PaulCraigRoberts.org. Let me ask you this question then. Uh, looking at this, what does your gut tell you? How is the Ukraine going to go? Well, I, I don't know. I think that ultimately it could split. Um, if you, you see, the, the Ukraine has Ukraine has given up on putting down the protest, and they even abolished the laws against protest. And the police have been viciously attacked. A lot of them have been burnt with Molotov. Uh, Molotov cocktails. Uh, they've been charged uh, with bulldozers, but they haven't replied with the kind of violence that you would expect. Uh, any protesters in the United States acting like the Ukrainian protesters are would have been shot down the streets and killed because the Ukrainian protests are not peaceful. They're extremely violent. And the police are just sort of sitting there taking it. So I think... Uh, well, it's clear the government knows it was unpopular to join the EU, so they're acting like they're neutral, but the order's gone down, stand down, let this happen, fake Arab Spring, and then there'll be a civil war, it'll split up, which is the grand strategy of tension uh, that Brzezinski's been pushing, and, and th there you go.
I don't think uh, I don't think the United States wants it to split up because if it does, then the western part will be reincorporated in Russia, and they won't get the pipelines. And 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 that's right. And so the rump state uh, wouldn't be enough for the EU or the U.S. But I think what may happen uh, is that the EU simply disassociates from this policy and breaks off from it, which leaves it as a Washington thing only and that then could weaken it and uh, that could be good cop bad cop too let's let's get to the economy we only have a little bit of this segment the next one left uh what do you make of the i'm sure you've seen the market graph that the wall street journal market watch has scary 1929 market chart gains traction uh, if market follows the same script trouble lies directly ahead they're slowing down on qe unlimited uh, dr roberts <laughs> well you have to keep in mind that in 1929 uh, the United States government wasn't in there manipulating every market. There was no plunge protection team, no, no exchange uh, stabilization plan. Uh, there, there wasn't the Federal Reserve uh, manipulating the price of gold, uh, uh, driving up the price of bonds, ma manipulating the stock market. Uh, today, all the markets are manipulated, so it would be a mistake to sure. compare manipulated markets to the extent they're manipulated now. Well, then how long can the false reality continue? It, I think the Fed can manipulate things until the dollar goes. I, the only vulnerability that I can see in this is if there's a run on the dollar and they, because the Fed has really no way to uh, guarantee to support the dollar price they can't print foreign currencies to buy dollars and apparently they've they don't any longer have any gold <laughs> so i think that's right the germans asked for their gold a year ago and have gotten basically none of it uh, right i think that the vulnerability is the dollar the dollar is is what was threatened by QE, and I think the reason they're backing off on QE is trying to take some of the pressure off the dollar. Because if the dollar goes, it's a bigger crisis than the bank's failing. And so their house of cards, I think, they can keep it going until there's a foreign run on the dollar, and it may not happen. It's just, you don't know how long they can keep this going. So that's really it. The, the, the liberty, the scientists we had created the greatest technologies. They've been turned towards fraud. The world's at a technological disadvantage, and we're being inserted into a false system. And, yeah. and, and I guess that's why we see the hubris coming out of Washington. <laughs> right. That's right. Look, the, the trading desk, as I understand it, the trading desk of the New York Federal Reserve Bank, it is now huge and it they can do everything stocks bonds commodities gold uh, foreign currencies <laughs> and and they have the mechanisms in place to intervene in all of those markets and in recent columns uh, that i did together with dave kranzler an experienced gold trader uh, we show we can we point out we can isolate to the minute the manipulation incredible i want to talk about that manipulation straight ahead with dr roberts dr paul craig roberts we got six minutes i'm going to try to let him cover the rest of the economy where he sees it going and then we're coming up in the next hour naked ambition tsa wants new generation of body scanners rough seas ahead the new noah movie is a eugenics anti-population uh, basically alien flick some of that's coming up uh dr roberts uh, finishing up with um, you know the fact with that this whole thing's rigged i mean that just keeps coming out even the rolling stone did an investigation as you know years ago saying it's all rigged that was the headline uh, what else is on your radar where do we go from here what do we do <laughs> well i don't know what what we can do alex other than what you and i try to do is give people information that's more or less on the mark um, there's no recovery they continue to pretend that if you read uh, Janet Yeltsin's testimony, you know, she's the new Fed chairman uh, before Congress. <clears throat> it was all about how we have this recovery, <laughs> which doesn't exist. So when you live in a world of complete, total disinformation, uh, what, do, <laughs> what do you do?
what do you do? Uh, what I suspect is going to happen, but I don't know, is the, the economy will continue to weaken this year. It'll get weaker uh, so that the deficit becomes a bigger issue again. The debt ceiling has to be raised higher. Um, it puts uh, more pressure. Uh, the Fed will have to uh, uh, restart quantitative easing or, or boost it. Uh, or <clears throat> else they'll have to let uh, the economy go to save the dollar. Uh, it's hard to know where the Fed will come out on this because it's really caught between two big crises. And one is you cannot forever print your currency in such enormous amounts and not see the exchange value of your currency uh, collapse in, in the exchange markets. So. That is the limit on their ability to have quantitative easing. On the other hand, if they don't do quantitative easing and the economy is weakening and they're faced with collapse of employment, uh, collapse of the bond market, collapse of the stock market, and that's an immediate crisis. So that's what's the slow right. weaning going to do then? It's, it's, it's a, the slow weaning right now, I think, is show. It's show to take pressure off the dollar. It may be they're running out of the ability to manipulate the gold price. Um, and so they want to take pressure off of, of, uh, of quantitative easing on the dollar. You know, one of the reasons for the rapid rise in gold is that people said, well, they're just going to inflate the currency away. Well, quantitative easing sort of proved that that's what they were going to do. So if they back off from it, it sort of quiets down the fears about the dollar being overproduced. <clears throat> I just don't think they have a good long-term plan for their economic uh, situation. Well, that's evident by the police state Europe, absolutely. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, we also don't know whether they may, they may be caught off guard by what happens um, in the Ukraine. You know, now uh, Kerry, the Secretary of State, is threatening France with sanctions. Crazy. Because, because French companies are uh, going over to see about doing business with, with the Iranians because it looks like the sanctions are going to be removed. And so Kerry is threatening France. Well, when you start threatening your own NATO allies, you don't know what the result is. We know that the, the, the German government is very upset with Washington. It can't get its goal. They're spied on. Uh, they, they, they don't want to be a, a drug into a war with Russia. Uh, they're very uneasy about all this uh, Ukraine business. How does it benefit them to have uh, the, the Russians? It's simply on? deteriorating, and we'll get you back up in a month if you can do it to give us an update. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for the time. All right, we'll be right back with the next hour. Well, the globalists have created a fraudulent economy where they can pick the winners and the losers and can insider trade in every economy, every market, and shut down their competition. It's unbelievable. But fraud destroys overall productivity and wealth, and they can't paper over it forever. They're going to try to paper over it with secret police, black uniforms, armored vehicles, drones. Um, it's not going to work. And I suggest the path of prosperity and renaissance. Let's go to your...